Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be looking at a very highly exponential equation. We have z to the power z equals e to the power negative pi over 2 and we're going to be solving for z. I said highly exponential because we have z to the z which is kind of like complex exponentiation and that's the definition I'm going to use. In most books complex exponentiation maybe in all complex analysis books z to the power w is defined as e to the power w ln z because ln z is well defined and as you know if z can be written as r e to the i theta then ln z can basically be written as ln r which is the real log some people write it as log but I'm just going to use ln plus i theta which is i times the argument make sense so this is well defined and we can go ahead and plug it in here and w obviously is a complex number so you multiply a complex number by another complex number in the rectangular form if w is like you know c plus di because i'm assuming z is a plus bi then by multiplying this you get e to the power an exponential which is again well defined because we know that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta so e to the power i times whatever angle is going to give us this which is again rectangular form and then the other piece is just going to be a real number think about it this way if you have something like e to the power e plus uh, i probably should use maybe let's just use e a plus bi for this okay this would be e to the a times e to the bi and this is going to be cosine b plus i sine b and this is just real you see okay so that's how you can define it. And that's what we're going to use. But before that, let's go ahead and take a look at this graph. The graph of z to the power... Uh oh, that's not a good color. We need darker. So this is basically the graph of z to the z. But notice that my line, the horizontal line, z equals negative... Um, e to the power of negative pi, uh, negative pi over 2 is so low that it's not going to intersect the graph which means they don't have an intersection point because e to the power of negative pi over 2, by the way, you kind of see it like the x-axis, but that's not the case. It's actually 0 0.2 something, but it's so small that it looks like uh, it's on 0. So e to the power of negative pi over 2 is 0 0.2. Remember that approximately. And the minimum value of this function, the global minimum at this point, is this value, which is about this much. So notice that the minimum value is much larger than and it's going to be somewhere here, I don't know exactly, but this value is obviously much, much smaller, therefore, there are no real solutions. Really? I mean, why are we talking about real solutions if this is a channel about complex numbers? It's all about complex numbers, but guess what? Real numbers are also complex. Did you know that? Because if you write a real number a plus pi with the b equals zero, it just becomes a, which is real. So, let's see what we can do about this. So we have z to the z equals e to the power negative pi over 2. Some of you probably recognize this equation from somewhere. I'm not going to tell you when and why and how because I don't want to give it away. But if you know it, give it to yourself. Don't say it, okay? Anyway, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a special function. And I know some people don't like this function. At the beginning, I had the same feeling like, why are people making a big deal about this function? What is so important about it? Well, it kind of solves some problems. That's it. I'm not just overvaluing it, but it's called Lambert's W function, right? Okay, so let's see how we can solve it. First, I'm going to use the definition. Z to the Z can be written as e to the power Z ln Z. And then from here, we get a direct equation, which is nice. Z ln Z equals negative pi over 2. You know the value of negative pi over 2, so you can always put it into a calculator. Uh, but calculators can't solve this equation. Isn't that amazing? Well, they can, but you kind of have to prompt it that way. So if you say Lambert's W or product log, then it's going to be able to solve it. But we have to do a little work because this is not t e to the t. Remember, Lambert's W function takes t e to the t, our special t, specialty i have a specialty right and it turns into into a t in other words it's the inverse function for this it's nice because we have a product and it turns it into a single t which is nice right so if you have like for example uh lambert's w of e you could write it as lambert's w of one times e to the one and that's just one because it just takes this number but as long as these two numbers are the same right of course you can have t and something else right they have to be the same so we're going to work it out 
So this is my equation and let's see how we can work it out. I have z but I don't have e to do something. Let's go ahead and write the z as e to the ln z and that does the trick, right? So now we have the following ln z times z which is e to the power ln z equals e to the power negative pi over 2. Don't divide by e to the ln z. That's not going to help you. You're going to be in big trouble. Instead, use Lambert's w function on both sides because it's just amazing. Don't you think? Now, when you apply it on t e to the t, it's going to spit out an ln z, which is t. And on the right-hand side, though, it's just going to, it's just going to give us Lambert's w or product log of e to the power of negative pi over 2. Now, if you enter this into Wolfram Alpha, I didn't do it for you because I'm lazy, but come on, you can do it, right? You can uh, kind of prompt it this way. Product log, directly on no spaces, and then put parentheses e to the power of negative pi over 2, and it's going to give you a bunch of good answers. Take a good look at them because you're going to get the answer. Make sense? But guess what? This is not what I'm looking for because I'm looking for z. How do I find z? z is e to the power ln z, but ln z is Lambert's w function of e to the power negative pi over 2. Therefore, this is the answer. I know you may not like it. Like, why? How is this helpful? Well, you can put it into your calculator. And obviously, there is no algebraic method to solve it unless it's a good number. Like I told you, right? If you Lambert w 2 e squared, you get a 2. That's nice. But what happens if you have 2e cubed? It's not going to work like that. So you kind of have to force it, right? Lambert it. Anyways, hopefully you get the idea. And this almost brings us to the end of this video because I have to still have to show you something. Yay. Wolfram Alpha, obviously, is going to show you the solution in the most general form. And what I did was just show you the principal value, just negative pi over 2, right? But here's the thing. I got to tell you something. When you look at e to the power... Uh, Lambert's W of negative pi over 2, it adds a 2 pi i n, right? Where does that come from? It's just a period. You know that when you add 2 pi to any angle, you end up at the same angle, but you can basically come up with infinitely many values, rotations, branches, cuts, cracks, whatever. But here's the thing I'd like to share with you. e to the power, remember, this was our answer, right? If you put it into... Lambert's, I mean, not Lambert's, Wolfram Alpha's tool, which is WolframAlpha.com, then you're going to get something like i pi over 2 for this, not for the whole thing. Oops, messed up. So, since this is i pi over 2, if you enter this, hopefully you should get something like that, then z is going to be e to the power i pi over 2, and again, this is e to the power i theta is cosine of theta plus i sine theta by using Euler's formula. Amazing mathematician, by the way. This is cosine pi over 2. Let me think about it. Isn't that 0? 0 plus i, and it's just i. Yes, z is equal to i. Did you know that? Well, here's the thing. If you didn't, i to the i is e to the power i pi over 2 to the power i, which is e to the power negative. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm ahead of myself. e to the power i squared pi over 2, which is e to the power negative pi over 2. So the number you're looking for is z i, which is obviously one of the infinitely many solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.